Welcome back to the weekly news roundup and the Linux news edition. All that great stuff going on in the Linux and FOSS world. Uh, there's a couple things that we had to filter out, and then we thought we had too many articles, then we had too few articles, and I don't know. So hopefully the Linux uh, edition today is good. We settled on four articles. It probably should be larger. But let's go ahead and get on into the news. Uh, the first is, is that Clam TK. Uh, which is the GUI interface for Clam AV. So remember, Clam AV is your one popular Linux antivirus. And really, it's just there to filter out Windows viruses that have made their way over. It's like, you don't have any power here, but I'm going to kill you anyway because you're a virus. Uh, kind of like that. Um, but the Clam TK is a GUI for Clam AV, and the developer of it has, for a variety of reasons, just kind of stepped away and... Uh, gone the way of hex chat of course uh it's still there if somebody would like to pick it up and run with it you're welcome to do so but for now our gui for the virus scanner that we probably don't really need a whole lot in linux uh is going defunct first released in 2004 it has been in the repositories for most distributions for a while it's not disappearing it's just not going to be updated so at some point in time if a you know, distro wants it for whatever reason, they can take it over and make sure it's good. Otherwise, it's going to eventually probably just be dropped out as abandonware. Um, sad when that happens. I remember like my favorite Linux music player was Banshee, and I'm pretty sure it's completely defunct. It used to ship with Linux Mint. It was exactly what I wanted, and uh, they don't have any more, which is very sad. But, you know, there's other options as well that are satisfactory to me, but that's just kind of what happens sometimes when you're talking about uh, open source software. Of course, it happens with closed source software. Look at all the video games that they just decided to kill after you've paid all those money for. I don't know. Uh, Lubuntu actually is an interesting distro. I'm actually going to download a copy of it and do a review of it again soon. I have not looked at Lubuntu in a long time, but uh, this is the Ubuntu with the LXQT desktop. And as of right now, this is the only Ubuntu flavor that you have the option in the installer to disable snaps altogether. Like it doesn't disable them, but you can install Lubuntu without any snaps because the rationale is you might use Lubuntu for a computer that is a lot lower spec, maybe an older computer, doesn't have as many system resources, and snaps do take extra system resources. And so the idea here is to have one that doesn't have the idea of snaps. But what this article is about is there is now an installation monitor for your snaps. Because when you first install the system or you're updating whatever snaps, the snaps won't work. And so if you go into the Ubuntu desktop and then really quick, the first thing hits Firefox, there's a massive lag before it starts. This is because the snap is not fully installed until you've landed on the desktop and it's still working in the background. So what this application inside of Lubuntu does is it gives you a notification reminding you that snaps are still being installed. They're not yet ready. And if you're doing any updates on snaps, it'll give you that. So you have a, a basically a front end notification that something is still going on in the snaps in the background. Therefore, don't worry if your snaps do not appear to be working right now. It just has to do with the uh, how it's working. But this is a really good. Um, first, we have that snap monitor. Second, we actually have the ability to install an Ubuntu flavor without snap, which is neat. I'm curious how it's doing Firefox in that case. That's why I kind of want to grab a copy of it because I was reading the article like, well, that's neat. But how do they handle like Firefox and Thunderbird and Chromium, all these uh, applications that are coming with snap versions instead of your repository versions? And finally, we have a new UI for apt. So if you use apt and you like doing the things with a terminal, and this is, by the way, how I do it. Uh, I Even if even Linux Mint, despite it has a really good uh, package updater, I still update things in the terminal. So when you go in to use apt in the terminal, one of the criticisms has long been everything looks the same. Maybe this is that leading factor why um, uh, Linus and Linus Tech Tips brick to machine because there was a warning there. He wasn't reading the screen. Yes, he should be reading the screen. But what this new GUI is going to do is it gives you notices and warnings in different colors, upgrading packages in green, removing packages in red. There's a brief summary. So there is a lot of 
extra information and color-coded information inside of this new redesign that you can take advantage of. This will be rolling out in any distribution based on apt in upcoming versions. Of course, if you are on Bookworm and you'd like to run it now, you can go into your Bookworm and change your repositories up to the um, up to the experimental, and then you can run sudo apt install apt. Yeah, I love that command. That is a totally awesome command. Sudo apt install apt. Come on, guys. This is aptception going on right before your eyes. And when inception is done, the top still spins, and you will have beautiful colored designs inside of your terminal. This is totally epic, yo. That top is going to go. That top is going to go because sudo apt install apt. And our last article in Linux News, a very short section this week, is the Comic Desktop is approaching alpha. They are trying to get this up by the end of quarter one, which uh, kind of just passed. So uh, we might expect to see it very soon unless there's some major changes that still need to be done underway. And so with this, they have been making a lot of progress. There's been cosmic updates overhead. Uh, if you're new to Linux and you're not sure what cosmic is, this is a brand new desktop that's coming out. Uh, from System76. So System76 has their own uh, their own distro called Pop OS, which ships on their computers by default unless you ask for something else. And they liked elements of the GNOME desktop, but there were some limitations. And with the constant changing of the GNOME desktop, it was causing a lot of issues with trying to keep up with all those things. And so what they decided to do is rebuild something that kind of resembled part of the GNOME desktop with a lot of things that they thought would have been better changes, and they're doing the entire desktop environment in Rust. Therefore, it has the White House stamp of approval. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I'll leave it to you to decide. It might change in November. I don't know. Uh, but that being said, the new Cosmic is uh, coming on down the pipeline. They have, have the terminals in place. They have the uh, the a new uh, store in place. They just have a lot of good things going for it. So Rust-based environment and the updated one. So the up next updated um, Pop! OS is going to have Linux 6.8.0, which is the newest kernel. Uh, I don't know. I could not find any information about is, uh, is Cosmic able to run on these. I haven't looked at Pop! OS in a little while. I am going to download this one as well soon and have another look at it. Uh, to see. I particularly am interested in seeing how the, the Cosmic development is going. But the pre-alpha update of Cosmic introduces theming support for apps built on GDK3 and GDK4 and Flatpak. So you can do your GDK3, 4, and Flatpak theming inside of Cosmic now. Custom icon themes are integrated uh, for Cosmic and GDK applications. And uh, the new Cosmic Store will be coming out soon. It includes a sidebar for navigating features, browsing apps by categories, managing and installed apps and executing updates. So everything all in one. Hopefully it's way better. Like <laughs> they've always gone away with the GNOME software store. It's like the GNOME software center to me, my opinion, it's the functional thing that will work on pretty much any distro, but man, does it suck. <laughs> it's, just, it's like the most horrible software store there is, but at least it universally works. You can install the thing on whatever you want. Uh, so that's the good news. Uh, but they are building a new store just to manage stuff, hopefully better. That's why they've actually pulled in the software store, I think, from Elementary OS, which, in my opinion, is one of the best software stores. I, um, other than that whole, you know, um, constantly warning you about this application, you know, GIMP and LibreOffice might be dangerous. Like, what, what are you smoking? Uh, but uh, I'm not sure if that was the store as much as that was the distro. So, whatever. So the update includes simplified window movements, enhanced, of course, one of the things that uh, Cosmic does also is uh, it can to toggle between a tiled window manager and a, a regular desktop environment uh, with a click of a button. Effective, like like not pure window management, whatever else, but effective between uh, how the windows work and things like that, which makes it a, a nice little thing. So I'm kind of excited to see how Cosmic's going to look. So I'll be interested to see what that looks like uh, on the... Uh, flip side. Well, if you want to help support the channel, we do have a locals page. Uh, if I can find my transition button over there, there it is. Um, <laughs> so uh, local, switch to linux.locals.com. Uh, for those over there, uh, our short story obviously is delayed. I was going to put a post up about it. I was just like, 
too much stuff going on. Taxes got in the way and a bunch of other stuff got in the way. Um, I did finish the story yesterday. I will be doing the edits on it very soon. That story will roll out. Um, it will not get done this weekend. I have had an extraordinarily busy weekend ahead of me. And then uh, early next week, we're going to get the final edits in. We're going to record the audiobook, and then we're going to get the uh, audiobook and the um storybook up. We're just going to go ahead and hold back on the story until the audiobook is done as well. So those updates or the, those short stories are available for uh, anybody on the um, on any of the supporter platforms, those being Locals, Patreon, Subscribe, Star, and Think Life Media. You can get the audiobook and the print book. And we will do one more story. And then at the next story, we might take a month off, but I'm going to combine all of the 10 stories we have so far into a book and anybody can purchase that book. It's not just for supporters. I might give it out to the supporters for free, at least on some level. I don't know about all that yet. We'll see what the book looks like, the costs and things like that uh, when we uh, get to the bottom of it. So uh, just that's an update. Of course, you can help support the channel over at switchlinux.locals.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you all next time.